today on Puritan Rant. I want to focus on the Puritan John Flavel. And I don't know that there is a better Puritan to start with. And so I want to point you to a resource. Uh, this is John Flavel's uh, volume one of his works, which is a six volume work. And volume one is uh, a precious, precious book. Uh, I would say if you can't get the whole entire uh, set, volume one would probably be the one that I would tell you to get because of its Christ-centeredness, which is just pervasive throughout the entire volume of the book. But um, just a word on John Flavel. John Flavel is one of my favorite Puritans. Uh, John Flavel was a man that was, uh, uh, he was, you know, he was acquainted with with suffering. Uh, Flavel was married twice because his first wife died in um, uh, uh, trying to uh, give birth to their first son, and their child died died as well. Um, so Flavel went through quite a bit, and of course he lived during the time when, for Flavel, there was a lot of persecution uh, in England, and uh, the the Five Mile Act that was installed uh, there, where uh, pastors and Puritan pastors were not even allowed to preach uh, in their churches and preach against the uh, preach against uh, the 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 Church of England or, or anything like that. So they had to seek out places where they could actually preach the Word of God uh, uncompromisingly and free uh, in, in a way that they thought best reflected the Word of God. But uh, Flavel, Flavel uh, you know, is one of the best examples of Puritan preaching. I like to call Flavel the Southstone preacher because Southstone or Southstone Rock was a place on the beach there where in England where uh, uh, he would go with his church to preach. It was actually a rocky area of the, of the beach where uh, at high tide you couldn't see the rocks. But at low tide, the rocks would appear, and and uh, the and Flavel and his parishioners would literally go climbing on the rocks in order to assemble in secret. They would assemble in the woods and in different places just to be able to gather around Flavel's preaching. Uh, so Flavel is a man that uh, has a lot to teach us about preaching and pastoring and shepherding. But I want to focus on Flavel's first volume here. Um, the, 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 the volume is entitled The Fountain of Life. And the focus, the focus of the Fountain of Life, as I said, has everything to do with Christ. It's a Christ-centered volume. It focuses on the essential and the mediatorial um, uh, nature or excellency of Christ, as Flavel calls it. And the very first sermon, Flavel is talking about 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, uh, where Paul says, I determined to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. For John Flavel, he could not see anything more wonderful than to contemplate and to pour over uh, the beauty of this passage. As a matter of fact, the doctrine that he deduces from this text, uh, Flavel says, he says, he states it uh, in this sermon. He says, there is no doctrine more excellent in itself or more necessary to be preached and studied than the doctrine of Jesus Christ and him crucified. For Flavel, Christ crucified was the very soul of the gospel. Now, let me read to you some a couple of excerpts here from Flavel's sermon because I think Flavel gives us some language. Uh, he gives us ways of talking about Christ that really need to be recovered today. I think there, there are ways of talking about Christ that are sorely lacking and sorely, sorely missing uh, today in the church. Let me, let me just read first what Flavel says here about the knowledge of Christ. He says, the knowledge of Christ is profound and large. All other sciences are but shadows. He says, this is a boundless, bottomless ocean. No creature has a line long enough to fathom the depth of it. There is height, there is length, depth, breadth ascribed to it. He goes on to say, that it is a surpassing 
knowledge. He quotes Ephesians chapter 3 about the manifold wisdom of God displayed in Christ. So for Flavel, the study of Christ was the study of a bottomless ocean. It was boundless knowledge. It made all of the other sciences and all of the other types of subjects and themes and 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 and, and things, philosophy and and all of the other different types of subjects that one can study. It it, it made those shadowy. It gave it a it it, it compared. Uh, it, it was in, it was like a comparison between the substance and the shadow. In Christ was all fullness, all reality, all uh, concrete science, and everything else is reduced to a shadow. Uh, Flavel is also known as one of the most uh, affectionate, warm of the Puritans. His 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 tone and the way that he approached the. That the pulpit preaching, he was known to be one of the greatest of the experimental preachers of the Puritan times. And let me just give you a little sample as to why that is. As he pours over the beauty and excellency of Christ in only ways that he could, Flavel says, "It is the most sweet and comfortable knowledge to be studying Jesus Christ. What is it but?" to be digging among all of the veins and springs of comfort. And the deeper you dig, the, the more do these springs flow upon you. Flavel goes on. How our hearts are ravished with the discoveries of Christ in the gospel. What ecstasies, what meltings, what transports do gracious souls meet Doubtless, Philip's ecstasy is what he calls here eurekamen yesin, which is the Greek for, he, he cites the Greek here, and then he says, we have found Jesus. We have found Jesus. And so for uh, Flavel, he says, a believer could sit from morning to night to hear the discourses of of Christ. That type of language is so necessary in the church today. A language that exalts Jesus for all of his height, all of his depth, all of his breadth. A language that exalts in the language in, 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 in talk about Jesus' beauty. Where is that today? Do we see Jesus as beautiful? Can we identify with Flavel's words here? that there are within our hearts, within our souls, at the contemplation of the person and work of Christ, that there are meltings. Do our hearts feel ravished? See, everything that the Puritans ever did was aimed at practical pastoral theology. Everything that the Puritans did was aimed at causing us to love and see more of the beauty and of the work of Christ in our own lives and in our own souls. So I hope that Flavel's works and that Flavel's sermons will be a blessing to you. Um, there's, I don't think there's anything better that I like than to just sit here and uh, pour over volumes like this. You can get it on Red Grace. Please uh, support us by clicking on the link and going on to redgracemedia.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, I hope that you've been encouraged by this Puritan rant. And uh, until next time, go and read the Puritans.